everyone, I'm Dave Thomas and today I am building the Magnum Park Flyer rocket from Lock Precision. And so this is an in-between kit. It's bigger than the Lock 1 series, but smaller than the true high-power rocket. And this is meant to fly on 24 and 29 millimeter motors. So let's take a look at what's inside here. Okay, so we do have some basic instructions. All right, and there may be other things in here, so um, if you can't find things like decals, they might be folded up in this. All right, and the other side of this just shows the other rockets in this series. Okay, so first of all, we have a pre-slotted body tube. And if you look here, this is much heavier construction than a typical model rocket is. And so even though this looks like a fairly small rocket, it's uh, a lot heavier than a model rocket, low power rocket of the same size. Okay, we have a quarter inch launch lug there. We also have the option of including rail buttons with this, and I'm actually going to build mine with both. Okay, we have a Nomex parachute protector, nose cone, All right, and then we have the engine mount and the parachute is up inside of there as well as the shock cord. All right, and this looks like nylon. Um, you can use this or you can replace it with Kevlar if you like. Okay, uh, we have the decal for the rocket and also just a lock precision decal that can go anywhere. It's not necessarily for the rocket. All right, laser cut fins. And then finally, the um, centering rings and a uh, Kevlar tether. So this is what the rest of the shock cord will attach to. All right, so it looks like we have everything we need here. And coming back to our instructions, one of the things they suggest here is using epoxy rather than uh, wood glue or white glue for everything here. And we will do so. Uh, depending on where and the types of stresses that will be imposed on this, um, we'll use either 5 minute or 15 minute epoxy and this also um, is going to depend on your familiarity and comfort with using it. So if you've used epoxy a lot before and you can do things quickly the 5 minutes going to work fine. If you're fairly new to this or need a little extra time to assemble things then I would recommend the 15 minute epoxy. I'm going to clear away most of this and we will get started. Now something that's not mentioned specifically in the instructions is to make a line for the launch lug and or for the rail buttons. And so before I do anything else here, I'm first just going to make a mark here between two of the fin slots. And you can either eyeball this or actually measure the distance there. I'm just going to make a little mark and then um, on mine, I'm planning on using both the launch lug and rail buttons, so it does create a bit more drag, but it also gives me more launch options. So I'm going to need another line here. And then you can either take this over to a drawer edge or a door frame, or if you have a fin marking guide like this one, or a line marking guide, it's not really a fin marking guide. Okay, and here I'm just going to go ahead and make the line all the way down the body tube. And I can erase most of it later. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing with the other one. Now, if you're only going to use one of the launch pad devices there, you only need to do one line. Now 
we're going to do a whole bunch of sanding. So any place that we're going to have epoxy bonding, we want to sand around that so we have a, a good surface for the epoxy to bind to. And here you can just use some uh, sandpaper or anything between about 80 and 150 grit. So first of all, I'm going to sand around the fin slots. And this doesn't take much. All right, you don't have to go through and sand the entire thing through. Just take the gloss off. Now, for the launch lug, um, it's going to go on one inch from the aft end. So here we'll just take a ruler and choose one of the lines. Okay, and we're just going to make a mark there at the one inch. Okay, and I'm going to take my launch lug back out of the bag here. And I'll just use it as a marking guide. So that's going to go between these two marks. So I need to sand that as well. Alright, my other line here is for the rail buttons and that does not need any sanding along, along it. Uh, I've got a little bit of, kind of loose fibers there. I'm just going to take those off as well while I've got the sandpaper here. This will make mounting the motor mount a little bit easier. Okay, so the body tube's pretty much done there. Um, for the engine mount, okay, so this is going to be going up in here, and the fins will actually go through these slots and attach to the body or the uh, motor mount tube, and so. Um, I'm not going to be able to tell exactly where each fin is going to attach here ahead of time. So what I'm going to do is just um, make one end aft. So you can just write on here so you don't forget. Okay. And so going up to about that distance here, I'm just going to go all the way around the tube. You can just sand the whole tube if you like, and a lot of people do. Okay, now I may as well go ahead and just do the whole thing here. So that wherever our centering rings and fins end up, they'll have a good bonding surface. Now, something that is not included in this kit is a motor retainer. It just uses friction fit. I prefer not to do that. Uh, so you're going, if you want to have some positive engine retention here, um, I would suggest getting a screw-on type retainer. Uh, these are made by Estes, they're made by Aeropack, um, there are other, some other manufacturers as well. Estes is by far the least expensive because uh, it's plastic rather than aluminum. This is an Estes screw-on retainer for 29 millimeter, And so this will just fit on like that. And then this will go over. Now, because of its plastic construction, it has to be a little bit thicker than if it was aluminum. Now when this goes in, all right, the cap itself here, the retainer cap, um, actually has its knurled edges here extending out beyond the body tube. 
Okay, that's going to increase the drag a little bit. Um, so another option is to use an aluminum one, and the, the biggest supplier of these is Aeropack. And it pretty much goes together the same way, but because it's aluminum though, it doesn't have to have quite as thick of a ring, and that will just go right inside the diameter there. And so that's kind of up to you. Um, as I said, the way the kit is built um, in the instructions, it simply uses a friction fit, and you have to uh, use masking tape um, around the motor and then around the uh, motor mount too. Okay, so we've got two rings here. The ones with the slots in them here, little cutouts, those will, that'll be the forward ring. Okay, and this will be the after ring. These are really nice heavy duty wood. In the instructions, it says that these are made out of fiber. And obviously, these are kind of generic instructions here. But first, we're going to just dry fit these and make sure that they do indeed fit. Uh, that's really tight there. We'll try this one. Nope. Okay, so in that case, we can sand the insides of these. Okay, that's tight, but it goes on. Now, according to the instructions, the um, forward ring should be three and a half inches from the aft end. Three and a half is right there. Now, we may want to move these a little bit, so right now we're just going to dry fit these on. Okay, so the, the little slots there, one of those we're going to open up a little bit more and that will be used for our shock cord tether. Okay, and then according to the instructions, this should be flush with the aft end. Okay, so it's going to go in like that. Now if we compare this, all right, what we really want here is that the rings should be just outside the edges of the uh, slots there while the motor mount tube is flush with the body tube. Okay, so the forward one appears to be in about the right spot there. The aft one, you could do it like this. Now, if I really recommend that you don't make that flush uh, because even if you're not using any type of motor retainer, if you're just using masking tape, it's going to be easier if you've got an exposed area here. Okay, so I'm going to put this against the rocket and adjust that so that we just have the clearance there. The other um, good thing about that is that the uh, rings will actually help reinforce the attachment of the fins. So I'm going to dry fit this inside. And we may need to do a little more sanding. Alright, so you may have to do some sanding on the outsides of the rings here. So now, if the engine mount is flush with the body tube, we can look in there and I can just see the motor mount ring there, um, just beyond the edge. And here it's almost flush, so if I can move that just a little bit, they're exactly where they need to be. And then if we take a fin here as a measuring guide, all right, that's going to go in like that. Okay, and so if we look at it from the back, um, we actually need to bring that ring a little bit back here. 
Okay, so something else to consider. If you're going to use um, one of the screw-on type retainers, check with the manufacturer and see how much clearance you need here. Okay, so if we're going to use an Estes one, for example, all right, we need this much clearance so that it's actually up against that lip there. And if I just put this on like that, um, I've got a little bit of a gap there. Now you can fill that with epoxy, but it's best if, it is, if you fill it all the way in here. So I'm going to just move that forward. All right, now that's going to move the position relative to the fin slot here. All right, so just looking at the aft ring and where it's going to end up. Okay, so there's my ring there. That needs to be flush. So for this motor mount to fit properly, we actually have to have a little bit um, of the body tube ex or the engine tube extending out of the body tube there. And that also means we're going to have to push the forward ring up a little bit. Okay, so if I modify that a little, we'll just kind of push that up, put that back in. Okay, and now I'm not making this flush with the body tube, I'm making sure the aft centering ring is flush there. My forward ring is just visible. And now again, if I put a fin in here, like that. Okay. I'm not sure why they cut that fin like that. It may just be to use a generic slotted body tube. Okay, but that still fits. We've got enough room now for the motor retainer to fit on there if you're going to use this type. Given all the options, I've decided to go with the Estes uh, screw-on retainer here. And what I'll do in the end is simply file off or sand off the um, grippers here so that this will be flush with the body tube instead of kind of sticking out from it. All right, that means I will need to switch the uh, position of the aft and the forward uh, motor rings there just a little bit. Okay, it looks like I need to uh, file out that notch a little bit more. Okay, and I'm just going to do a test fit here, so I'll put the Kevlar up in the notch. And I'll put this on the forward end, okay, and that should go through like that, okay, now as I said for this aft ring, we're going to need to have enough clearance for that, so it's going to go on at least that far, okay, and we already know that this ring needs to go a little bit beyond our mark here. Now I'm going to, for the moment, take this end of the shock tether there and just pass it down through so it's out of the way. All right, let's do another test fit here. So with that ring flush there, the other one is flush at the top. I think this is exactly where it needs to be. Okay, and then if we slide the threaded portion back on here. Okay, so that's going to look about like that. And then if we put a motor in here, so let me slide that back out of the way. Right, so 
so we've got a motor down inside there as well and then we add the cap a little bit of play there all right which means that we need to extend our motor mount out a little bit more now with this change in motor mount position um, we're going to also need to make sure that this is stable all right, so don't forget to do a swing test when we get all done here again okay so once more we'll line that up with the aft end of the slot okay my forward ring is actually a little bit too far forward it can come back just a little bit there If we put this on, hopefully it doesn't now. I think it moved on me a little bit there. All right, so that's good enough there. external check here too. Okay, so I think that's going to be the way we want it. All right, now again, if you just want to use the friction fit to the motor, just do it according to the instructions here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move that down. We want about two inches there. And I am also going to remark where this ring needs to be. So that one should be there, that one should be there. I've made some 15 minute epoxy here and it doesn't take a lot so I actually weighed this out and it's about two and a half grams. And while most epoxies are meant to be mixed by volume, uh, you can do small amounts and mix them by weight without any problem. So now I'm going to move my rings here. And I don't want fillets on the inside parts here, um, either intentionally or unintentionally, because they do have the potential to interfere with the fins. So what I'm going to do then is take my epoxy. I've moved the rings inward. And now I'm just going to apply this to the outside corners. And part of the reason I'm using the 15 minute epoxy is it's going to give me the time to readjust the rings if that is needed. Okay. I'm going to push this forward until I see the line that I drew earlier. Okay, which is 
that's right there. Back that just a little bit. Okay, make sure you don't have any epoxy on the outer surface of the ring there. If you do get epoxy where you don't want it, um, you can remove that with some rubbing alcohol. It's like I really don't want it down in there. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing with this ring. So I'm going to so I'm going to pull it inward toward the middle there. All right, I actually should be wearing gloves. You can develop a hypersensitivity to epoxy if you're exposed a lot over time. And also just to keep from sticking epoxy places it shouldn't be. Okay, now at this time I am not going to put on the retaining ring and we'll do that after the rocket is fully finished. Okay, now I got a little bit up here that I want to get rid of there. Now that's going to tend to run, so just be aware of that. Okay, and then we're going to apply epoxy over the shock cord here. Alright, and it's trying to run away do its own thing. Let's go just embed it in there. Okay, now I'm going to do another quick check here. I'm not going to put this in. I don't want to accidentally glue it in place early, but I do want to make sure that we're spaced properly for the fin holes. All right, and now I'm going to allow this to dry vertically so that the epoxy here on the aft ring does not fall back toward the motor mount retainer. Here I've made up a small batch of five minute epoxy and I'm going to put this in in two stages. So first I'm going to put a ring of this just at the edges of the fin slots but all the way around so I can see inside here. I'm just going to rotate all the way around this just inside those edges and then when I push the motor mount in it will go into that ring of epoxy and once it sets it should be locked in nicely. Um, there's really no use of going beyond that because the the rings just not going to be there. That won't hurt anything. Okay, and now I'm going to slide this in, but not into the epoxy yet. And I'm going to take some more. I'm going to make a ring of epoxy on the inside ring here. And it's kind of hard to not to do it, but try and keep the epoxy off. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to slide that forward there. It gives us a little more room. But I am getting epoxy on the motor mount too, which I would prefer not to do, as it may create lumps where the fins are going to go. 
Okay, so I'm going to push that in. All right, and now I'm going to take a fin. Um, if you use 15 minute epoxy, this you can do this without a problem. Um, since this is five minutes, I'm going to have to be really quick about it. I'm going to go ahead and go right to the fins. Okay, put that in. Okay, and that'll help position the uh, rings for me as well. Right, I'm going to do the rest of this really quickly. And I say, if you use 15 minute epoxy here, um, this part will go a lot less hectically. All right, now here you can see the shock cord, so I'm just going to turn it a little bit. Put that fin in there. There we go. Okay, now I just need to make sure they're all fully back against the slots. And move this up a little bit. Right, now looking down on it, they should all be nice and perpendicular to the tube. Since it has the, the fin slots, it's pretty easy to keep it evenly spaced. Okay, so like that. And now we just let the epoxy dry, and when we come back we can do the fillets. While we're waiting for the fin epoxy to harden, I'm going to turn my attention to the nose cone. And as you can see, it's got some very prominent mold marks here. Also, this is a polyethylene and or polypropylene nose cone, so it's not going to take paint very well. To fix both of those problems, we're going to sand this surface. And so, start with 100 or 150 grit sandpaper. And first of all, just work on these little grab marks here as well as the seam, sanding those down so that they're flush with the rest of the nose cone. Also, this is going down into the shoulder quite a bit, so I'm going to go ahead and sand down the, the ridge there. Okay, now be careful as you're doing this not to damage the eyelet there. Um, we've got a few more mold marks here. Okay, and we can sand more on this if it turns out that it's too tight for the body tube. Now I'm going to continue sanding all the way around, kind of even out the scratches here. So that gives us a nice even surface, although it is pretty rough at this point. And now what you can do is move to 
a 220 grit sandpaper to give it a smoother finish and then we're going to prep this with what's called a bonding primer and it's a primer that's specifically made for plastics especially hard to paint plastics like polypropylene and polyethylene now I'm sanding this with 220 grit sandpaper to help smooth out the scratch marks from the coarser paper I'm just going to wipe off the sanding dust there. I'm using alcohol for this. You don't have to. I just use it because it evaporates quickly. But this way I can then look to see if I've missed anything. barely see some seam there. Um, that, that will be filled in by the primer. Okay, so the sanding part's done. Now as I mentioned I'm going to uh, spray this with a, a universal bonding primer and then the, the regular primer I would use for any model rocket. Something else we can do while we're waiting for the fin epoxy to harden is prepare the parachute. Okay, so this is a really nice nylon parachute here with nylon uh, shroud lines and what I'm going to do is attach a snap swivel to this okay so first thing I'm going to do is just gather these all around so all these should be about the same tightness one of them's a little off a little bit longer than the others but not enough to worry about okay and so I'm going to pass these loops through a snap swivel. Now it's fairly heavy nylon uh, shroud lines here and they may not fit through this. This is one of the larger snap swivels I have and it just is not going to go through there. So I'm going to come up with a couple other options. Here I have a few other options. So I could use just a larger snap swivel here and it's got a larger eyelet. Um, I could use a barrel swivel like this, but this does not have a means of attaching it to the rocket or the shock cord, and so we would also need a quick link in there, and this would add quite a bit more weight. So I'm going to try this with the larger snap swivel. And I think I can just do it here. There we go. Alright, now I've been messing around quite a bit with these, so now I'm going to put the loops back over my finger here. And I'm going to re-tighten and adjust here so that we're back where we need to be. Now before I set this into place, I'm going to show you one other thing that I've started doing with larger parachutes like this and that is to use some heat shrink tubing and this you can get in uh, the electrical section of most hardware stores. It's actually used to insulate solder joints but I'm going to use it for my shroud lines here. And you just need a piece that's big enough that your shroud lines will fit through like this. Okay, And then we can put that snap swivel on once more probably take us just as much effort. Now you don't need to do this. All right, you can just go straight to the snap swivel. But it actually looks pretty good once you get it done. There we go. All right, so let's bring those through and then once more 
check that we have equivalent lengths. Okay. Now I'm going to move that up. Now I'm going to take the entire snap swivel here and pass it through the loops and down. And then I'm just going to pull that taut. And so it's all kind of wrapped around the eyelet there, and that's fine. All right, one more check here to make sure we're not too uneven. And I'm going to push this up. And now we need to heat the wrap to 70 degrees Celsius or hotter. Um, the easiest way is just to use a, a small butane lighter here. Um, you want to do this without burning or melting the shroud lines. Uh, you can also use a soldering iron to do this, or um, some blow dryers get hot enough. I think I'm almost out of butane on this one. And don't hurry it. You know, if you try and hold it in place for too long, you'll end up scorching it. And that will not look good. And looking good is what we want here. There we go. Okay, and what this is going to do is help hold that knot in place because it's going to try and unravel there. Um, and it looks better than using glue on it and this, if you need to, you can just uh, insert a hobby knife, slice this open, and adjust things if you need to. Okay, so for now, this will be set aside until we have the shock cord and the nose cone installed. Next, I'm preparing the launch lug for installation. And you can just use it the way it is here. Or if you want a more streamlined appearance, you can cut an angle in each end of this. can do some fine trimming after it's attached as well. So here I'm going to um, sand lightly the back side where it's going to attach to the body tube. Alright, now we're going to bring the rocket in here. And I'm going to quickly make up some 5-minute epoxy. So here I have just a small amount of 5-minute epoxy made up. And I'm going to put this on the back of the launch lug. Okay, and then this is going to go on our marked line. Okay, so once we've got that on there, we're going to sight down the launch lug and along the line, and the two should be parallel. All right, and then we're just going to allow that to cure for at least five minutes. While the epoxy on the launch lug is curing, we can go back to the nose cone here. And I have applied two coats of the Universal Bonding Primer. And hopefully you can see this in the video that it's kind of rough. 
and the primer actually goes on a little bit bubbly and has a rough appearance to it. And this is part of what is going to help the later coats to stick to this. So you can either sand this now very lightly and then add your regular primer um, or you can put the primer on and then sand it. I'm going to do the latter. So I'm going to give this a couple of coats of primer and then uh, wet sand that primer with some 320 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out. The epoxy on my fins has cured and now I've masked the fins off for um, fillets here. And this is a bit different than you would with just using wood or white glue. And so what I've got is um, masked off areas here where I'm giving a, about a three millimeter or an eighth of an inch space between the root edge or the, the fin slot there and the rest of the body tube. Okay. <clears throat> I will also put uh, similar masking on the fins themselves. And I'll do that in just a moment. And it'll be spaced in about the same way. Okay. So, and then also over here on the launch lug, um, the spacing was such that the, the tape for my fins, I just uh, used an elongated piece and put it up along the uh, launch lug as well. Now you can see it's a little bit uneven and that's because my launch lug is not perfectly centered. It's off by about two millimeters. And you can either ignore that, which is what I'm going to do, or you can actually lay another piece of tape right along in there to even it out. But frankly, I don't think it's going to be that noticeable on the launch pad. Now for the fins, um, I'm going to do this in a similar way. Um, I'm going to let the uh, fillets come up a little higher on them. You don't have to, it's a matter of personal preference. So on them, I'm just going to let the two edges meet like this, and then I'll tear it off when we're ready to remove the masking tape. Okay. Now, for the epoxy itself, um, if you are accustomed to using epoxy, then go ahead and use five minute, but make up small batches at a time because you probably won't be able to get all these fins done. And I actually recommend just doing one fin at a time so that you can allow it to cure for a few minutes and then remove its tape and then go on to the next one. Okay. Now, one thing I will do um, is I'll probably end up having to do the launch lug and the fins here at about the same time. And again, um, speed is essential if you're going to use 5-minute epoxy. You can also use 15-minute epoxy if you want a little bit more working time. So I'm going to mix up a batch of epoxy here and come back and we'll start applying it. Alright, I have made up some 5-minute epoxy here. And definitely you're going to need gloves for this part because you use your glove fingers to smooth this in. And you want gloves that are as tight as possible so you don't have a lot of wrinkles in your glove finger. And then you'll also want to have some alcohol handy. Um, just plain old rubbing alcohol is fine. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to just lay down some epoxy here along the fin joints. Right, now remember this model has these elongated fin tabs where the fin doesn't actually fill the whole slot. So use some epoxy to fill that in. All right, and then get the other side of the same fin. And I'm keeping an eye on my time here. 
because this is five minute epoxy we want to let this just just start to cure but not set up completely yet all right it looks like I've got enough here or maybe another one so I'm gonna come over here so we've got some runny epoxy there so I'm just gonna go ahead and do at least one side of my launch lug going to let that partially cure for about another minute and then I'm going to come back and we'll smooth these in. Okay, now I'm going to take my glove here and I'm going to pull my fingers taut so that especially the ones I'm going to use for fillet smoothing, which are usually my index and middle finger, are nice and tight. I'm just going to apply a little bit of alcohol here. And then using that alcohol to finger, I'm going to smooth in the fillets. All right, have a, a paper towel or something handy. As well as some wipes at times. Okay, and I'm just going to turn this over this way. Get a little more alcohol on my finger. Smooth this one back. alcohol again and we'll smooth the launch lug. Alright, now before that actually cures we're going to remove the masking tape. So start with the fin, peel that around, All right, and then we've got one side of our launch lug. Okay, that one can be peeled up. Now it's going to pop up the one from the fin, but that's okay. I'm going to leave that front piece of masking tape there for just a moment. Okay, we'll go ahead and peel that one back as well. Alright, and then remove the rest from that side of the fin. Okay, now also notice my fins have not been sanded yet. I'm just going to do all the sanding and sealing after we get the fillets in place. I'm going to tear this back because we'll use that again. All right, now I'm going to let this finish curing for about 10 minutes and then we can go on to the next one. I'll do the other fins off camera and then come back. Here my fillets have cured enough that they aren't running. Okay, so we're past 10 minutes on a 5 minute epoxy, but I'm going to let these continue to cure overnight before I come in and sand the fins and some of the areas around the body tube there. Here's my nose cone after two coats of the Universal Bonding Primer followed by two coats of Fillable Sandable Primer. And then I wet sanded this with 320 grit sandpaper and now I've got a nice smooth finish that should accept paint really well. I'm going to set this aside for now until we get to the point of painting the rocket. Here my fillets are complete and I asked one of my students to do the sanding of the fins for me. Currently my left arm is in a sling and sanding is one of those actions that don't work very well. Okay, and we're about ready to put things all together here. So I'm going to pull the shock cord tether out. And then we're going to need the shock cord itself. 
and we'll also want the parachute blanket. Okay, so if we unravel this, this is all sewn together. So it's a, a nicely built harness. It's just miniature. Okay, so find one end of this. So I've got a loop in my tether and a loop in the harness. And what I'm going to do is put one loop in the other. Okay, so I, I decided to go with this end. So I'm going to put this loop of my uh, shock cord there. And then I'm going to run the other end of the shock cord through the tether loop. And just pull it all the way through. Okay, and then you're going to pull the two loops against each other. And they should make a nice joint like that. Okay, and you don't need to glue this or anything. It's okay if it's loose. Um, but the, the good thing about this is it makes it really easy to change. So if you need a new shot cord, just pull that out of the tether and you can change it out. Okay, come back to the other end. And on the parachute protector here, there's a, a little hole. And just run the shock cord through that as well. Okay, and I just run it down to the tether. That's fine. Um, and depending on what you want to do, you can just leave the, the parachute protector up here um, near the end so that it just wraps the parachute. Uh, but it may be that it's big enough that it will accept the, the shock cord and the parachute. I haven't tried stuffing everything together yet. All right, now to attach to the nose cone here, um, in high power rockets we would usually use a quick link for this, but I don't think there's enough room there. For now, I've just tucked everything down inside there, took the parachute back off, and put some tissue on the front of that so that it doesn't get paint on it, so that I can paint this separately from the nose cone here. All right, now I have also left a line here in case I want to put in the um, rail buttons that come with it. Okay, now they don't give you a whole lot of instruction for this, um, and they generally assume that you're going to use the wood screws and stick those into the um, centering rings. Although, even with this, these screws are way too long. Okay, and I think I am just going to use mine with the launch lug. Um, you can put the rail buttons if, on if you want. Uh, I would actually recommend instead of using the full size ones, if you're going to put rail buttons on this, use some uh, mini ones that use 1515 rail. Or excuse me, 2020 rail. They shift from English to metric units when they do that. Okay, but I'm just going to leave mine with the launch lug and not worry about the rail buttons at this point. So really the only thing I have left to do is some painting and then to put on the uh, engine retainer and structurally this will be about done. In fact structurally it is done right now. Okay, but I'm going to do all the painting and stuff off camera and then when I come back we'll take a look at how it came out. My rocket is painted and I went with a gloss black with a color shifting rainbow effect over that. And then my nose cone is red and it's set aside for the moment. What we're going to do now is add the single decal to this. Now the kit comes only with the title decal here. If you want all of the other fancy decals that are shown in the packaging, you'll need to order those separately from Lock Precision. Okay, so this is a vinyl decal. And so what I'm going to do here is first just trim it a little bit. Okay. 
so we don't have this big blank area here. Caught a little paper there. Okay, now you've probably seen this if you've watched my other videos. For vinyl decals, we can do this. Now that looks like they're clear. Trying to decide if that clear is. Yeah, so you can peel off that clear layer here. Or you can leave it on. So this is probably protecting it. I think I'm going to go ahead and take it off there. All right. And then we're just going to put this in a little bit of soapy water. This is just one drop of dish detergent in this basin of water. And this just lets it, makes it easier to reposition our decal if we need to. Okay, so I'm going to put this on the opposite side as my launch lug. And try and go, let's go for about there. All right, and we can just put this down and now check it to see if it's straight and centered and it appears to be. Okay, so if it's where you want it, then you can just take um, a cloth or tissue or a paper towel here and just squeegee out any water underneath there. And then as that remaining film of water dries out, it will become permanent. Okay. Now you can um, clear coat this if you want. I would wait at least 24 hours though to make sure that we've got all of the water out. Our final steps are simply to put everything together here. So take the nylon shock cord and unfortunately this is a relatively small eyelet here. And some people like to um, use a more reinforced attachment. So one of the things you can do is drill a couple of holes in the angled part of the nose cone here. Put a loop of Kevlar through that and then attach everything to that Kevlar loop. I'm going to go ahead and do this with the, the given eyelet here. So the first thing, okay. there are a couple of ways to tie this on. And I'm going to show a kind of a strange one, but I think it'll work well. All right, first I'm going to take out about a foot or so here from the end loop. All right, I'm going to fold that over and I'm going to stick that through the eyelet here. Okay, and then I'm going to take the end of this shock cord, put it through the loop in the eyelet, and then cinch that down. Okay, and then the parachute can go up here, and you can either use a quick link like this, but that's going to add a little bit of weight, um, or you can use a big snap swivel. Okay, so here's our parachute that we prepared earlier, and it has a big snap swivel on it. Okay, and then you can just clip this right here. All right, and since this is all contiguous, most of the strain of the weight of the rocket is going to get transmitted directly to the parachute from the body itself. Okay, so there's, there's not going to be a lot of strain on this little eyelet here that might be a little weaker than we might like it. All right, and then from there, all we need to do is pack this all together and it will be ready to fly. Here we have everything put together, and as I mentioned earlier, we have a couple of choices for engine retention. So the way this is built now, um, we can just use masking tape. And the way you do that is you'd put your motor in like this, and then take several layers of masking tape and wrap around there. And here we want to wrap around both the end of the motor mount and the motor itself. OK, 
Okay, it doesn't look very pretty, but it does work. I've tried it. Okay, and we just mush all this down, get good contact with it. Okay, and you can launch it like that. Um, I had mentioned the polycarbonate retainers uh, that Estes makes. I think the polycarbonate, but some other plastic perhaps. All right, and just yesterday I got a shipment of some Aero, uh, Aerotech retainers here. These are aluminum. And so this would fit on like that. And then the motor would go in there. And then we have the retaining ring. Okay, and that actually goes almost perfectly flush with the body tube there when it's installed. All right, I'm going to go with this option because it does look really nice. All right, now if you do this, um, you'll want to make sure to check the balance of the rocket. Make sure it's still stable. Do a swing test with it. Here I've made up a small amount of 15-minute epoxy. You can use 5-minute as well or even 30-minute. Um, any of them will be fine for this. This is just what I happen to have on hand quickly. And we're going to apply this to the outer part of the motor tube. Now there is some paint on there, um, but it's only on that tip. Um, down below that it's fine, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but if you are, you can just sand any paint that you got on there off. And we just want to fully coat this, but we don't want it inside the motor mount tube. Okay, and you can you can be a little bit generous with this. Any excess will be forced down to the bottom where it will not only reinforce the edge of the motor mount ring, the retaining ring, it will also uh, build up the aft fillets on the centering ring. Alright, so that looks pretty good there. Now I'm just going to put the retaining ring on, turn it a little bit, get good seating. And now we just let that cure. And that's it. So all we need after this, after the, the retaining ring has cured there for 24 hours, you can go ahead and launch this. Have a great launch and a safe recovery. And please stay tuned for more of my videos.